各位同胞，谢谢你们来参加这个群众大会。我很高兴碰到你们，也是很兴奋，因为我和我的同事，新加坡民主党的同事，已经出提出许多个替代的政策。来为你们服务，为社会服务。我先用一些华语来跟你们解释，但是请你们原原谅，我华语讲的不是很好。我以前在小的时候在英华学校念书，你知道了，英华学校的学生，我们的中华中文华语。每次念的不是很好。后来我去到美国念书的时候，有去到美国的一州叫乔治亚 （Georgia）， 在那边我就碰到一个很漂亮的女生，我心跳了很快，就想过去跟她讲讲话。后来发现她是。台湾人，他看到我的时候就问我：“贵姓大名？”我就说：“哈。”那我的朋友就说：“你叫什么名字啦？”哦，我就说：“我姓徐，徐顺全。”后来慢慢想追追他的时候，就没有办法，要拼命一直讲中文吧，咿咿啊啊，没有办法。就慢慢的学，学到后来回来到新加坡，去参加新加坡民主党啊，啊，在民主党内，我也是要跟着我的党员慢慢的学，慢慢的讲。刚开始时候谈政治的事情都特别困难，但是一路来慢慢的练习，慢慢的学。我今天有一个很重要的事情。想跟你们谈一谈。我们去访问的时候，我们去 walk about， 我们在你们家门的时候，每次都听到你们跟我们讲的最关心的一件事，就是我们的生活费。新加坡现在整个世界上。最贵的一个国家，贵的一个城市，我们还比纽约、比伦敦、比日本还贵。前几年前我就听说，哇，那个东京哈，在日本 Tokyo， 对不对？他们说一杯咖啡啊，吓死人了，大概四五块钱。现在呢，现在新加坡还比东京贵。你们想一想，你加上我们老百姓，我们工作的，我们的薪水一直被压低，为什么呢？因为政府让很多这个外籍劳工去进来，跟我们比，来抢我们的工作，把我们的。工钱压低。我前几年，我有一个朋友，他跟我讲，他有像这个也有想要申请，在一个餐厅，好，要当那个啊 ，chef， 炒菜的。他跟他们讲说，好，我们给你，你想要多少？他说最少，要是一千七、一千八，一一个月薪水。他们说好，后来呢？有另外一个，是从中国大陆的，他们过来，他一千三就可以了。你觉得他们是那个餐厅是请谁呢？就是这样子，我们的薪水才一直被压低。难怪新加坡人在亚洲里最不高兴的人，最。大的给最大的压力的
，这个都是为了行动党的政策。我们能够，我们有办法替你们解决这个问题。但是你们要了解，如果我们没有进入国会，如果我们这次的候选人没有进入国会，我们帮不了忙。这个你们这里了解。所以在这个竞选的时候。在这个大选，你们要很清楚，我们需要，你们需要投新加坡民主党的票，不要只是下个星期五进去投我们的票。你们需要跟大家讲，跟你们的家庭人、邻居，住在我们这个区级的 Holland Bukit Timah、Marsiling UT、Bukit Batok、Bukit Panjang 玉华，跟大家讲。大家就需要投行动党的票，帮我们进入国会，我们才有办法来替你们发言，好不好？谢谢大家，祝你们身体健康。我这阵用淡薄福建话跟咱讲好不？我我的福建话吼，讲了无什么好话啦，人讲我福建话是。六点半的福建话 ，half past six， 但是不要紧，吼、哦，我讲了，你能明白，我就欢喜。我讲福建话吼，你人爱晓听 ，P A P 讲的话吼，免福建话吼 ，P A P 讲的话，什么话吼，你人就爱说去。因为呢，一大蒜迄阵，一老白晒。一家咧，嫌唔到，家咧讲 sorry， 可以给只机会。大蒜过了咧，一定讲听无，自己来小心。伊阿妹算迄阵，伊话拢总真正甜啊，甜蜜蜜的话。阿伯阿姆，你甜蜜蜜的话，你唔看，卖听较侪，你听较侪，你就甜着。有人真侪人甲我讲，你读甲做博士，你也无也是读甲做博士，按做的人爱参加环卫党，做甲安尼款呢？我甲伊人讲，我讲，人有一条命，卖怕算，一条路行，卖直直看累看重，人会晓过。让爱家己的人民。我看，老人人家阿姆阿伯，无累，爱去剪叶、植皮、一抓鸭，有无？我徛喺度，大白油五行，你无相信？你阿弥，吼无太阳一阵。九点十点，你看伊人，你拄个车无？吼、哦，伊个抓阿嘛，头壳光光样，伊咱头壳光看袂到吗？伊无变，伊本在拄。我八路在前天，前个晚上，我去伊个伊个电视馆，你知无？好、哦，我唔是改咱改 Lord Mr. Lawrence Wong， 好、哦，辩论啦。啊，转来迄阵，差不多八九点。暗暗，吼、哦！我差淡薄弄入去一、一、一老阿，一老唔，因为一直后背突突嘛，一抓阿他甲关关看袂到，一一行一老是 against the traffic， 我看袂落，我看袂落，所以，所以我来参加这环卫党。几年前有一个。人伊名是叫单机算，我过会记的，出报纸、早报、晚报都有登他的这个故事，他这个事情。他是一一做业业粗工的啦，吼、哦，业报白卡袂行，一想业买一名称好一困
，伊想讲伊逐日吼困涂骹到，伊也早起也爬起来爬袂起，伊无够累，到真真侪年，伊醒起来，买一门床互伊抹，伊惊，还是靠有长，还是无够累，伊到到家到家做甲无变。一直落惊呢，伊 M R T 车来一跳，啊，过一边咧，有一个做政府岗的，真阿乖 ，Permanent Secretary， 伊名叫陈永顺，伊工资最高呢最好，伊个整个家庭。一家吼，去法国 ，Paris， 去旅行 ，Holiday。阿公去到爱学吃法国的食，吼，爱很五十天，五万里，五十块，啊，五万块。你看啦，咱这国家按做做干呢款嘞，政府。有责任，政府袂使安尼安尼做。有类人，你直接家己个，咱你直直晓顾。啊，咱条件人，你互分淡薄类，你就讲袂使，咱国家会破解。<笑>政府安尼做，无良心，真啊值啊！我看袂落。无变，我都要讲出来，所以我来参加这个环卫党、民主党。我只爱问问你哪两名，你捌看到无？总理，哦，总理李显龙，伊去到倒落，有真侪 body guard， 有无？也保镖，卖去倒落伊都有保镖，安怎咧？伊卖人欺负吗？哦。和一一点的那个是保卫，不是吗？啊，恁人呢？你人人民百姓，你人有保镖无？你人有，你人也是有保镖，你人也是有 body guard， 就是 S D P 是恁人的 body guard， 恁人的保镖。但是，那是我们无去国会，我们无变帮帮助的，我们无变保卫你们，所以很重要，真啊重要。你人要爱会晓支持，哦，到民主党的票，你人的决心，你人的欢乐，你人的希望，我人会安，我人会了解。我人是国会，你人的希望，你人的欢乐，最近搞我人一做一一个国会，投 S D P 的票，你卖只只去投 S D P 尔，甲大家讲，吼、哦，你家庭的人，甲因人讲，真正重要，你爱投支持新加坡民主党，好不？那该人讲 ，S D P 会使无 ？S D P 会使无 ？S D P 会使无 ？S D P，S D P，S D P。我用，就只有诶，当你无咪好。我，我细汉你怎无？我诶，厝边头尾。侬囝有淡薄是打潮州，是潮州人啦，吼、哦，隔壁安弟啦、哥啦，甲阮人配粮配热，听淡薄学淡薄，吼、哦，潮州话打了无？刘先生在那后岗的这么好，哎<笑>，不要紧，吼、哦，我是想讲，现在我淡薄淡薄跟恁人解释，吼、哦，恁人听了会明白，会了解
，我就真欢喜。各位，新加坡人民，哦，你你哋知道啦，我功夫話，我識聽，但係講多啲就又係有問題啊。但係啊，唔緊要。我想同你哋講一句話，一句話係乜嘢 ？P A P， 佢哋講乜嘢啊？佢哋講人命，你哋冇錢冇得傾，係咪喺？我哋 S D P 呢？我哋講冇錢仲有傾，所以咧，我希望你哋人命。會支持新加坡民民主黨，大大家投民主黨嘅一票，好唔好？多謝啦！收到啦，收到啦，收到啦，收到啦，多安多安，多安多安，謝謝大家。謝謝，謝謝，謝謝，謝謝，謝謝。Saya tak boleh cakap bahasa Melayu. Sikit-sikit conversation boleh, tak tapi cakap banyak susah. Saya ibu, dia bapa orang peranakan. Lu tahu lah, ha? orang bapa cakap sikit bahasa Melayu, sikit bahasa Inggeris, sikit Hokkien, campur-campur macam rojak. Tapi rojak sedap. Bahasa rojak sangat Singaporean betul. Mak cik, pak cik, saya faham. Kos cara hidup di Singapura really tak boleh tahan. Saya tahu. Lu pergi hawker centre makan. Atau pergi kedai membeli barang-barang keperluan Macam minyak lah, gula lah, susu lah Semua harga pun naik Tapi satu item saja tidak naik Lu gaji tidak naik Saya ingin, ingin menurunkan kos sara hidup SDP Saya apologize banyak maaf, bahasa Melayu tak baik. Tapi, lu boleh faham English. Saya hati sangat gembira. Saya kasih Encik Daman Huri dan Encik Sidik menerangkan SDP policy. Boleh? Kami masuk parlimen, semua orang senang sikit. Kenapa? Kerana kami calon-calon SDP banyak kuat. Lu mesti sokong SDP. Undilah SDP. SDP boleh? SDP boleh? SDP? 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 Terima kasih. Wanakam, jana naik ke kaciga, wakaling yunga, nandri. My fellow Singaporeans, it's so good seeing all of you again. At an election rally, thank you, thank you for this very warm reception. I am humbled. I am also thrilled to stand before you again tonight, after a long break, a very long break, and to share with you the exciting message of the SDP. A message that for 15 years I've been working on. 
a message that I want you to help me spread throughout Singapore. And the message is this. Never before in Singapore's history has an opposition party built up an alternative platform, backed up by a set of comprehensive policies, and then fielded a slate of candidates with the right stuff to push for these policies in the next parliament. We do this because we are a responsible party, a competent and constructive party. We do this because we want to give you a reason to vote for the SDP, not just against the PAP. We do this because we want to build a system where we can have intelligent and substantive debates in parliament where policies come under intense scrutiny by SDP MPs. Through the course of this campaign, my fellow candidates and I will highlight the alternative, I the alternative ideas that the SDP has drawn up. And we will explain how they will ease the burden for you. But there isn't enough time for me to go through all of the details of our policies. And this is why I invite you to go to our website at yoursdp.org and read for yourselves how our ideas can help you. So what is it that we want to make better? The most pressing issue that you've told us is the high cost of living. And because of this, the stressful lifestyle that we all struggle with in Singapore. In 2014, a survey by the Credit Leone Securities Asia showed that almost half of households in Singapore have little or no savings. In other words, they live from paycheck to paycheck. Now, this is the middle class we're talking about. They're just one bill away from financial ruin. If your children contract a serious illness or say if your mother, elderly mother, falls and breaks a hip and needs to go to hospital, or you get into an auto accident, you are staring into a financial abyss. Now, I don't know what you're going to do if this happens, but I know what I am going to do. I'm going to go into parliament to make sure that we lower the cost of living. That same survey found that the majority of our elderly indicate that they are not saving any money. Is this any surprise? After we work all our lives to pay off our HDB loans, how much do we have left? And the little that we have left, the PAP now wants to withhold it under the minimum sum scheme. The survey also found that a high proportion of younger Singaporeans in their 30s and their 40s are unable to save. Now, you don't need to be a genius to figure out that it is the cost of living that is the cause of much of our difficulties. In 2001, according to the Economist Intelligence Unit, we were only the 97th most expensive city in the world. In just over 10 years, we jumped to becoming the most expensive city in the world. Now, the PAP will tell you that all this is because of world trends, nothing they can do about. This is patently untrue. Our financial and economic stress is a direct result of PAP policies. And I'll show you how. In 2001, Mr. Lee Hsien Loong, who was then the Deputy Prime Minister and Finance Minister, he rewrote the Banking Act to attract the super-rich to come to Singapore. As a result, we have the highest proportion of millionaires and billionaires in the world. The massive inflow of foreign capital pushed prices of everything, housing, cars, rent, your food, and so on, pushed all these prices up. At the same time, the PAP opened the floodgates and imported en masse cheap foreign labor. Now, now you're competing with foreign workers who can take the kind of salary that you cannot survive on. This double whammy 
of the escalation of the cost of living on the one end and the stagnation of wages on the other. Both born out of PAP policies is making life extremely tough for our people. It's the same dismal outlook for our younger Singaporeans, including our graduates. For them, the future looks anything but hopeful. They now have to compete with foreign students for places in our universities. And these foreign students are, for some reason that I still quite, can't quite figure out, get, uh, getting generous financial assistance from the government. And when our local students graduate, they have a tough time finding jobs. And when they finally end up with a job, many are underemployed, engaging in low-paying or low-skilled positions. Again, because they are competing with foreigners in our own backyard. How many times have you heard of university graduates, some even with advanced degrees, having to resort to driving taxis? Not that there's anything wrong with driving taxis. It's an honest living, and I have tremendous respect for our taxi drivers when they go out for such long hours. But clearly, clearly our university graduates are not being employed in the fields that they've been trained for, and there is something wrong with our system. And with high HDB prices, housing has become largely unaffordable for young couples. Because of all this, our work-life balance is completely out of kilter. If you so much as to dare leave the office at five and say that you want to spend time with your family on weekends instead of coming back to the office, you're afraid that your boss will replace you with a foreign worker because there is an abundant supply of them in Singapore. All this is making Singapore a very unhappy place to live in. A Gallup poll found recently that Singaporeans were the least likely to report having positive emotions. Another survey conducted by the Randstad Group just last year found that Singaporeans are the least happy and the most stressed out workers in Asia. As a result, many Singaporeans choose to emigrate to other countries. Unfortunately, these are, according to the government, the top four or five percent of our talent pool, the very people whose skills we need in Singapore. So what does the PAP do? Instead, instead of reviewing its policies that are causing all these problems, it comes up with this brilliant idea to replace us with foreigners. In the past decade or so, we have brought in so many foreign workers that for every 10 people that you see out in the street, only six are Singaporeans. Now, I want you to listen carefully because this is where it gets crazy really fast. The PAP sees all these Singaporeans leaving and it hatches the idea to bring in foreigners to replace us. This makes this crowded island even more congested which leads to greater competition for jobs, making the already stressful situation here even more intense, and in turn that leads to even more Singaporeans wanting to leave, and on goes the crazy downward spiral. We saw this. We saw this happening 20 years ago. We tried to warn Singaporeans about the damage that it was going to cause. I can show you all copies of our newspapers, The New Democrat, where we try to warn Singaporeans of PAP's intentions and policies. We said that we needed an opposition in Parliament, an effective opposition that will think for you, that will look out for you, an opposition like the SDP. But election after election, the PAP candidates were voted in with overwhelming majority. And there was no one, no one to check its policies, no one to review its policies, resulting in the problems that we have today. Will it happen again this election? Will Singaporeans, with all the problems that we are facing, problems which I repeat, 
are a direct result of PAP policies, vote in the PAP again in such numbers that we only end up with one party in the House. Imagine, imagine my friends, the nightmare of waking up next Saturday morning after polling day and finding out that PAP has again won all of the seats. Then think, think of all the problems that you face. The overcrowding, the stress, the low wages, the unfair competition for jobs, the underemployment, the high cost of living, your medical bills, unaffordable HDB prices, your future without adequate retirement income. And then think that you have no one to speak up for you on these issues, that you don't have a voice in parliament. It's a bit like driving a car without a steering wheel, isn't it? But it doesn't have to be that way. You can have a say in shaping our future. You can have a say in our policies that will affect your future, your children's future. But you can only do this if you vote for the SDP. It is an unthinkable scenario, but not an impossible one. And the only way to prevent such a nightmare, my friends, is to make sure that you vote for the SDP and tell all your neighbours to do the same. Now I want you to picture this, the reverse. Think about the next parliament with 11 competent, constructive, committed SDP MPs. Now think about the issues we will raise. Think about how when the government says, let's raise the GST, or let's delay the CPF withdrawal age again, or let's raise the minister's pay, then think about how the SDP will be there to speak up for you. Now as sure as the sun will rise tomorrow, the PAP will say, that our ideas are dangerous and reckless and it will ruin the country and bankrupt the nation. Dr. Vivian Balakrishnan has already started the ball rolling. And two, if they cannot convince you, they will say that Chi Soon Juan is a liar. Chi Soon Juan is a untrustworthy. Chi Soon Juan is a gangster. I don't know what this has anything to do with the debate. But every time when they cannot answer our questions or debate with us in a logical manner, they will throw out their standard line. Chi Soon Juan is a liar, a gangster, a psychopath. Already, Sim An and Lawrence Wong are starting these personal attacks and bringing up issues about Mr. Cham Si Tong, about the healthcare subsidies hearing, issues that happened, and I'm not exaggerating, that took place in the last century. <laughs> Their idea is to attack me and to see if I respond and whether I defend myself. If I do, they will attack even more. And by the time we're done with the nine days of campaign, the whole elections would be over and they would have achieved their objective which is to prevent me and my colleagues from talking about the real issues. More importantly, to distract you, the voters, from the real problems that you face. My friends, you tell me, is this a trap? But I find it so sad. Our younger generation of ministers are also showing that they're willing to engage in this kind of gutter politics, to win at all costs. I want to tell them that they're still young. They have a whole career ahead of them. I want to tell Mr. Lawrence Wong and Ms. Sim An that it's not worth it. For what profit a man to gain the whole world and yet lose his soul? I want to stick to the issues. I understand your worries. I know your hardship. I see your pain. 
I know because I've listened to you. I know because I've spoken with you. I know because I live among you. I know what it feels like to keep counting your dollars and trying to cut down on expenses. When you need to see a doctor or buy that extra packet of milk or choose a better quality cooking oil, you are always checking your purse to see if you can afford it. I understand. Sometimes I go to Giant to buy groceries. And once in a while, I want to buy some ice cream for my children. So I go to the freezer and I look, take a look at the prices and immediately I discount Ben and Jerry's haagen -Dazs. I look at Wall's ice cream and I think of getting a tub. And my wife comes along and says, maybe it's better if we get it if it's on sale. I know. I know what it is like to count your every dollar. At times like these, the worst thing to have are people who are out of touch with reality and make policies that affect you and how you live. If they don't understand, if they don't understand the difficulties that you face, the difficulties that you face, then how can they help you? Mr. Chan Chun Singh, DPM Thaman, say that Singaporeans earning 1,000 can not only survive, but buy an HDB flat as well. <laughs> Mr. Tan Chuan Jin thinks that some of our elderly people collecting cardboard do it because they want to exercise. And when PAP MP, Dr. Lily Neal, pointed out that meals at hawker centres were too expensive for the poor, Dr. Vivian Balakrishnan haughtily replied, how much do you want? Do you want three meals in a hawker centre, food court or restaurant? This is a party that has so many millionaire ministers that they don't know what it is like to be poor. They are completely out of touch with the real Singapore. Folks, there is nothing more dangerous than a government that is out of touch with reality. We understand. We care. We know that you want a compassionate government. You want someone who thinks about you when policies are made. You want somebody who cares about your difficulties. My friends, I care. Professor Paul Tambaya cares. John Tan cares. Chong Wai Fong cares. The SDP cares. That's why we are here. That's why we're doing this. And that's why 25 years ago, I joined the SDP. I could have continued to be a professor, earning by now $20,000, maybe even more, with all my consultant's fees. My wife, May, she also holds a PhD, and will also be working. Together, we could have led a more than comfortable life. But I don't care. I don't care about the zeros at the end of my paycheck. No, I take that back. <laughs> to be honest, to be very honest, I do care. But not enough to keep silent when I see that old lady who is bent at the waist collecting cardboard just to make her pay for her meals, while that permanent secretary flies his family all the way to Paris and pays $50,000 just for cooking classes. When every time my children stand up in school and say, to build a democratic society based on justice and equality, I am part of that system that lies to them. These these are the things that I care about. And these are the matters that I want to take with me to Parliament, to speak up and to change things for the better, for you, for all of us. 
I want a system that works just not for the rich, but for everyone in this country. I want a people healthy and happy, not an island overcrowded and stressful. I want affordable housing where flats don't cost us a lifetime to pay off. I want our retirees to live secure and dignified lives with all our CPF savings. I want a universal healthcare system where everyone gets quality medical attention regardless of their financial status. I want a political leaders who serve the people, not just themselves. Will you, my friends, will you go out and tell everyone in the constituencies what you've heard here tonight? Tell them. Tell them that you have heard this vision of a prosperous and productive Singapore. A Singapore that cares for our weak and our old. A Singapore that is open and democratic. Tell them that the SDP is more than just a party. It is an idea, a way of life, a vision that will transform Singapore for the better. Tell them that you have heard of this party that wants to serve you, not lord over you. A party that truly cares. Tell them, my friends, tell them that there is an alternative. Tell them about the SDP. If this is the kind of voice you want in Parliament, a competent, constructive, and compassionate voice. If this is what you believe in for our future, our families and our nation, then tell them that they must vote for the SDP. You must vote for the SDP. I have never lost faith in Singaporeans. And even in the bleakest of moments, I've always believed that we would triumph, that democracy would eventually come, and that justice would ultimately prevail. How am I so confident? Because the human spirit can only be suppressed, never crushed. Thank you, and good night.